William Steinitz, the first world chess champion, doesn't need a lot of introduction. And in this position, he performed a fantastic attack. So without further ado, let's dive in. His opponent, Fischer, started the game with e4. He wasn't the world famous Fischer, the American chess player, but another one in 1872. And here, after the move e5, we have bishop c4, a5, and bishop takes g8. Not a very nice move. Actually, white here should play something like d4 and develop very fast his pieces. He cannot punish instantly black player, but uh, he should develop the pieces first. It was a very aggressive attempt actually to capture something in the center. But white player was extremely greedy and he captured here on g8. His idea is to weaken his h5 square and capture some pawns there because the king is little vulnerable, right? So we have rook takes and now he didn't give this check instantly because black can play something like that and after this he can start attacking the queen and maybe then he can capture the pawn on e4. But the greedy player played first of all e takes f5 and after d5 black would like to capture his pawn back but now we have the double check what to do g6 looks logical pawn takes and now stain it start playing very very nice move because white not only captured a pawn here he's a two pawns up but he's also threatening e5 not only h7 but e5 as well for that reason stain it's here played rook takes g6 defending e5 square because after queen takes e5 we have a fantastic skewer here pin actually fantastic pin over the e file rook e6 and queen is gone he cannot go anywhere he can capture on h7 but after queen on g5 you can see the queen here is a little squeezed maybe we're threatening something like this or we're threatening g2 actually to capture something here and why didn't like that position for that reason he played knight d2 what is the reason behind it Obviously, to develop his pieces, castling short side, and in the same time, renew his threat to capture on e5. I don't really like it, but it's a threat now, because we will not have the same pin. So, knight e2, and now we have knight c6, over protecting e5, short castling, and uh, you should not develop, uh, you should not play with the same piece uh, so many moves, like the queen here, and you should not develop it in this way, because black can develop his pieces with tempo like this one now he's threatening the queen and the knight in the same time white is very lucky because he can capture a pawn another pawn and attack the rook in the same time so we have rook here queen d3 the only square to protect the knight and now you can see black pieces start attacking whites we have e4 the queen is under attack we have only one move this one because the knight needs protection and here white wasn't in a hurry to play d4 d4 is not good is not a good move because he can capture on e4 and white is a three pawn sub right he's attacking uh, the king he's attacking the bishop and it's very easy to lose the control but here we have queen h4 threatening checkmate he would like to create a checkmate threat here on h2 what to do h3 looks the only move and black exchange some of the pieces in order to increase his uh, pace the pace of on the attack we have bishop takes queen takes and knight d4 you can see black pieces are speedily coming into the attack the queen is under attack the c2 is under attack so what to do he played this one and now we have the diagram position and uh, here it's very nice time to create uh, to pause the video and try to think by yourself what are you going to do with the black pieces and black found this amazing sacrifice knight h3 the idea behind it is to open up the lines against the enemy king and let's see during the game he played this one but if he just captured here we have queen h3 and now black is threatening a lot of checkmates actually he's threatening here he's threatening on h1 and the rook can go can go on uh, g6 so white doesn't have any defense here it is a checkmate so we have queen king h1 and here is another diagram actually the question here is how to continue the attack with the black pieces and here black played this amazing move queen takes here on h3 this is a check 
he cannot do a lot of things and after this we have a check with the rook. Actually the game didn't end it because black king can go forward and we have another check, king g3 and unfortunately here for white king he didn't, he is not in a checkmate position right now but a lot of black pieces are attacking and white pieces cannot help. We have another check here, king g4 check king here and we have another check with the rook. He has two options during the game he played on g6 but going on e6 cannot help him a lot because we have another check here king f6 check with the bishop you can see all of black pieces are coordinated each other this is a very powerful knight protecting the the rook and the bishop is attacking the king so after this we have we will have another check king h6 bishop f8 and this is transposition to the game because during the game he didn't play king to e6 as we just seen but he played king g6 we have a check the knight is helping and uh, after king f6 this didn't happen during the game we have a checkmate in two moves actually i'm challenging you to find this beautiful checkmate in two moves and if you manage to do it you are very welcome to write it below in the comments and here we have king h6 we have a check here king h7 and sometimes the very forcing moves like checks will end right so in these positions we need something else and this is quiet moves quiet moves are the moves that they are preparing the checks and we have king f7 he is preparing to, to bring more pieces and he is creating the mating net against the enemy king, controlling the squares around him. And after rook h1, he don't have a, a lot of other moves, we have another quiet move, bishop g7 and uh, now he played d3 and the final checkmate came with rook h8. Final checkmate, all of black pieces are participating to the attack and we have a beautiful checkmate. Thanks for your time and I hope you enjoyed the video. Here it's time for action. This is the initial page of my website and here you can click give me access to get access to free lessons. You can read this page and if you scroll down here you can add your name and your email. After that you're going to take a free lesson how to avoid chess blunders. So time for action is now and you're very welcome to join my mail list.